lady, and I had the pleasure to meet her this morning. Uh, this is Muna, and Muna will be discussing for us, let me just turn my page a little bit here, uh, ESG reporting, the complete returns. Muna, um, just, sorry, Mergani, just uh, uh, relocated a few months ago to Dubai from her main office. She is the Chief Human Resources and Sustainability Office, office at, I'm going to say the way you would say it because you're from Sudan, Hajar, right? Hajar Group instead of Hagar, American way, right? But um, I would like to tell you just a little bit about her. She has 20 years of experience in humanitarian aid, uh, humanitarian aid development and corporate sustainability. Muna holds a Bachelor of Science degree in Computer Science, a Master's in Development Management, and high diplomas in International Aid Administration and French. Her career spans renowned organizations like Care International, Plan Sudan, and ECHO. As Head of Corporate Sustainability at Hajar Group, she champions socially and environmentally responsible operations aligning with sustainable developmental goals. In addition, Muna oversees human resources, uh, providing strategic leadership in learning and development compensation performance management, succession planning, and change management. Her dedication to humanitarian values and sustainability marks her as a distinguished figure in her field. Ladies and gentlemen, please let us put our hands together for our next speaker. So good afternoon, everyone. It's always uh, a bit intimidating when you have to present following such distinguished speakers. Do you want the mic? Uh, I think that's fine, or sh I better use the mic. So um, um, basically, a lot has been said about ESG and what ESG is all about and the importance of reporting and all of that. What I will be presenting to you is just how uh, we do it. We are like Nicola. Where's Nicola? We like to make things uh, our own abbreviations. We like to make things fit for our context, particularly that we are a corporate operating in a developing country. So sometimes um, theory, when it comes to practice, like theory on ESG, when, when we want to implement it, we get faced with a lot of obstacles, a lot of hiccups. So uh, basically, um, I'm trying to, it's not moving. Should I keep here? You can use this one. Okay, just the enter. not moving. Okay, so I'll, I'll give you a quick brief about Hajar Group. Hajar is a, is a corporate uh, company that has been operating in Sudan since 1904. Naturally, we've been in and out of a few businesses since then, but I find ourselves being very resilient. We've weathered nationalization. We've gone through um, uh, colonization. We've actually been nationalized twice. And recently, we've been hit very hard by the erupting war in Sudan. But we still remain and we're still operating. Um, I, I would like to share with you as well. Currently, we have uh, our strategic focus is in renewable energy, uh, agricultural value add, and technology. And our focus is on Africa, because, and we believe that these focus areas are the 
are, are the, 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 the areas that should or will be helping uh, sustainable growth in Africa. Um, I'd like to just um, read you our mission because I believe all that we're doing and the sustainable, um, sustainability activities that we are implementing are actually anchored in the mission of our founder, which has been set, the mission was set back in 1973, which is let us work together in peace and harmony to build up new businesses that will be of benefit to us and most importantly, uh, most importantly to the countries and people we chose to invest in and work amongst. So this mission says a lot. Everyone who works for Hajar knows knows it by heart and is actually, to a large extent, implementing it. So yeah. what does ESG mean to us? I think it means what it means to every other um, com uh, company, and we use it as principles and metrics to measure our behavior, to measure our operations, and to measure our impact when it comes to environmental, social, and governance issues. But we also use it as we are an investment company we also use it as part, a big part of the due diligence we do to businesses we are looking at investing in. So all that concerns people, social, the environment, and governance. When it comes to the environment, um, I can't claim that we're doing it all, but we are definitely uh, monitoring our carbon fit footprint. Um, we are looking at climate adaptation and mitigation projects. I'm very proud to say that we are the first and only private sector in Sudan to carbon trade. And uh, we look at the protection of the environment and biodiversity either by, unfortunately, right before the war, we were progressing really well in um, uh, embarking on mangrove restoration in the Red Sea in Sudan. But this has gone down the drain, unfortunately. Um, we look at uh, sustainable use of resources and waste management. When it comes to governance, definitely uh, board diversity. Um, we help actually as the sustainability team, we help in developing authority matrices for companies and for along with the legal team, of course, and um, for the board. And uh, in anti-corruption, we also are involved in anti-corruption and compliance projects. We were progressing really well in a project um, uh, related to um, anti-corruption and ethics and compliance, and then also the decision-making process. Social, uh, oh, I'm so sorry. You haven't been hearing anything? Just a little closer. <laughs> okay, sorry. So when it comes to social, and as uh, Dr. Ashraf has mentioned, it's really not about planting, um, you know, painting schools or building schools. It's really, we start, we always like to say, and this is the term our CEO likes to say a lot, is that we need to tidy up our house first. So we really like to start from the inside, particularly that we have industrial companies. So we have a large base of laborers, uh, which we need to focus on their pay, on their contract. And that is also to, um, uh, one thing which is very important to highlight is that we operate in a company that does, in a country that does not have governance, where we could get away with things if we wanted to where we could employ people without even contracts. So it is purely and strongly a self-monitoring uh, exercise and a self-governance uh, process. So when it comes to social, we focus a lot on um, our labor practices, our human rights practices, diversity and inclusion in particular, um, uh, social development, like community development projects that's like the charity, philanthropic part, we also consider it as part of the, our ESG practices. Um, um, our consumer issues, data privacy, and all of that, we consider it as part of uh, the S. Um, so what has been happening? In our opinion, uh, we believe that in the past 10 plus years, there has been an increased um, interest, but also concern on the impact of businesses, the impact businesses have on shareholders and stakeholders and uh, the community, definitely, including the environment. And there was a very big need to quantify that impact. 
So this has led, and that's how we see it, this has led to an overabundance of reporting platforms, guidelines, metrics, standards, that has jeopardized or came at the expense of simplicity. And with that, there was confusion on how to progress. So should we use the, uh, should we base our work on the ISO standards 26,000 or the S&P global metrics or these guidelines or use which platform exactly? So we sort of opted to do it our own way, but definitely with reference to the international standard. So we based um, our policies on the ISO standards 26,000. We're signatories of the UN Global Compact, and we also refer a lot to the S&P Global Metrics. So we have, this is, these are, I mean, I'm sure you all know all these uh, frameworks, pr principles, and ratings. This is just a very small uh, sample of what we have out there. Um, and the controversies around them, and um, uh, um, many of the speakers before me had already mentioned them, so I don't want to be repetitive, but there are the issues of greenwashing, there are the issues of data quality and uh, clarity, there's also the cost, there's also the technology, which not every, so if we want even small businesses, startups in a developing country to adopt sustainability measures, sometimes we can't ask them to use the, the technology that comes with it. Sometimes they can't bear the cost of this technology in these platforms. So it has a different, uh, you know, um, it has different con concerns when it comes to uh, different countries. There's also, which raises a huge concern for me personally, is the focus on reporting rather than impact. There is a huge, uh, I mean, whenever I hear about ESG, I hear about ESG reporting. But what, does, what comes before the reporting? Are we there yet? Do we know how to do it? Are we doing it properly? Yes, reporting is important for not only peer pressure, but for investments and for all of that. But then uh, the, the, the practice and the implementation is way more important. Um, so we chose to have impact over metrics. We, we were very late bloomers when it came to reporting. We were focusing on how to do things. And um, so if we are making reporting mandatory or uh, disclosure mandatory, we do not think that this will solve the problem. And we do understand that metrics definitely uh, provide a structured way to measure uh, ESG, but it really, we believe that it is overshadowing uh, the importance of um, uh, positive change and sustainable impact. So we really need to create a balance about, uh, between the two. So uh, for us, impact really needs to translate into tangible change. Uh, positive uh, outcomes and also the depth and the significance of the impact should be more uh, is more important than the quantity and the size of the metrics that we collect and measure. Uh, we need to have adaptive strategies and that is what we did is that we make uh, strategies that are fit for our context. I'll give you an example later of how we did that. We need to have creative solutions and um, really have uh, true values beyond just statistics and data and measures. Um, and that is when we uh, came up with the idea of the complete returns. And the complete returns for us is basically a metric that um, it's a measure of the group's financial performance coupled with environmental, social, and governance uh, performance. So, and that is a simple formula of re uh, return on equity plus the sustainability index. I'll, I'll take you through what sustainability index to us, but return on equity is the financial metric we all know about, measuring profi uh, profitability. But we no longer report to the board only the financial metrics. We actually report our complete returns. And... Uh, Prior to embarking on these complete returns, we definitely thought about materiality, um, particularly that we have different companies, some of which are very, very um, new, advanced, technological. Others are quite old, very old, uh, and, and uh, you know, um, like industrial, laborers, um, uh, manual stuff, and that that we they, that were working fine, but that was were very a bit 
it was tricky to uh, embed things in them the same way that we did with nascent uh, companies. Also, the, the production processes were different, the services provided were different, so we had to look at the materiality of these metrics um, with regards to each and every company. Look at the impact, look at the significance to our stakeholders. Some companies produced uh, uh, consumables, food products, others produced fridges, other, uh, others uh, were in telecom. Um, so the sustainability index, so the complete returns is the return on equity and sustainability index. For us, the sustainability index is basically another measure that we have set up. Uh, first, we relied on the SDGs. And it helped us um, identify where we want to head and aligning our strategy with the sustainable development goals as far as possible. So what we did basically is that we looked at all the SDGs, all of them, along with all the targets that come with them and the indicators, and we selected in practically all that we were already involved in and those that we are supposed to be involved in. So um, an example would be, very, I gave a very basic example, SDG 1 of no poverty, and we're already contributing to that by um, creating jobs, but also we need to look at the minimum wage. So we ended up choosing 11 of the SDGs. I'll need to speed up a bit. So uh, we, looked, we selected 11 SDGs. I'll give you a quick example of how we looked at one of them, which is uh, the gender equality. Basically, it's achieving gender equality and empowering all women and girls. We looked particularly at target 5.5, which is ensuring women full and effective participation in, in the workplace and in the decision making. Indicator 5.5.2 is about the proportion of women in managerial positions. So we took that indicator, we reflected it on us, and we um, um, like fit it for our context and changed it to proportion of women in top management levels in Hajar. Top management levels in Hajar are basically directors, suite, suite, C-suite, grade A, which are all the heads of departments, and general manager positions. So we created a computation method like a formula, so number of women divided by number of employees in these positions. And at the time we created that computation method or formula, it was in 2019, we looked at the baseline at that time. I frankly do not recall what it was in 2019, let's say 8%. We set a target for 2025 in close coordination and agreement with the CEO uh, so that we work on it. And then we gave that, because we did this for all the 11 SDGs, we gave each one a weight. And the weight depends a lot on the importance of that metric for us and also the practicality of doing it. One example of things that were not practical is increasing the number of women in industrial companies for the sole reason that the market did not have the supply. So vocational training in Sudan was a big part of it is a, um, 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 like men, so there were no supply of women in the market. So we would have been shooting ourselves on the foot had we set a target of 50%. But that is not to say that we let, it, we let go of it. We were co communicating and talking to vocational trainings about it. And, and with these metrics comes work, comes a change in policies, comes activities, comes projects from looking at our sexual harassment policies in the workplace, if there were actually cases of sexual harassment, how do we recruit people? Are, are there hidden resistance from heads of departments to recruit women? All of that, anti-discrimination policies, which we, were, we already had, but we needed to make sure that they were actually um, applied. And this is just an example of other SDGs that we looked at. So uh, uh, SDG 8, where we looked at, since we have industrial companies, decent work uh, uh, and economic growth, so occupational injuries, um, inclusion of people with disabilities in the workplace, and then we created formulas, and then we worked on activities and all of that. This is the end result. It's a very... Uh, you know, very boring, heavy report, but we do that on a quarterly basis. And, uh, and the, the, the final result is basically 
we, uh, we had set a target, uh, complete returns, we had set a target. We take 70% uh, of the return on equity, couple it with 30% of our sustainability index, and this is for us our complete returns. So uh, that is not to say that we undermine all reporting, uh, other reporting mechanisms or metrics, but we really saw this as fit for purpose for us. And this has not stopped us from um, uh, developing and working on our UN Global Compact reports, on our S&P Global one. Uh, but as mentioned earlier, we really wanted to um, do it in-house so that we're more like we can amend and adjust as we see fit, particularly that this, this had to go with a lot of paradigm shift within the company. So we had to do a lot of awareness raising, um, amongst the heads of departments, amongst the general managers, laborers, everyone, so that it facilitates the process when we come to implement it. Thank you so much. Thank you.